Vaka Mambroski, today is a J-Style Beat video. I've heard a lot about this artist. I thought he was in the same lane as Yee, so I thought it was my thing, but apparently I was totally wrong. So I researched a lot, lot. I came to find out who Jace is, what his beats are. It's it's not Sinti as Yee, it's not totally not Yee or Ken Ken. It's just way more like ambient, I guess you could call it. Without further ado, let's get straight into the video. I started off with the sample from a Hideaway sample library. You can see it over here, it's from Chemcourt. I took the start called breaks which is in D minor and I pulled it up in my DAW the only thing I did was pitching it down and uh, I made it a lot slower because I felt it was just a little bit you know I was saying a little bit too too fast I had this um, origin vintage plugin on there which I have at a real I have a lot of stuff going on you can tell but then over here I really did cut out a big chunk of all the frequencies the cutoff is at 8,000 8 8k Hertz so yeah you know you can really like compare it to a Drake song for instance it has like that feel the, the the dark drake samples type of feel very like ooh, smooth kind of obscure you know what i'm saying that's that's really the vibe that i was going for the ambient vibe it, it, it already had a lot of reverb in there too i just cut out some lows because they were a little bit too much i don't think i ever did this on my channel um but the uh, first thing i did i took a perk loop for my own kit which is uh this pull up george on go kit or wait, is it even the name it's, it's pull up on go yeah that, that's the name took a perk loop matter of fact let me show you all this explaining offset it like this just one quarter note offset these parts which they really had a had a tonality i cut those parts out all over the whole sample and then at the end in the middle uh in the at you what you could you do but then at the end and in the middle i uh, also cut out some more uh parts because i also wanted the break and that results in uh this this track which i'm gonna show you what the processing was there's an eq on there to cut out the lows there's a compressor to make uh the volumes be more like comprehensive i guess you could say like not too much <laughs> But like really consistent volume. Then I have uh, also this uh, ambient plugin, this vintage plugin again, the Origin plugin. There's so much effects on there, I didn't even know. <laughs> so we also got this phaser on there, which is at a fairly big amount of dry wet. Didn't really do too much to that. Then we went over to the auto pen. I really wanted it to go only on the sides. I didn't really want it to be too much in the center because it, when it was in the center, it was kind of interfering with some of the other sounds I had in the beat. And that's the thing you need to be really careful of is that you don't have sounds that are kind of competing for the same space. So I adjust the shape because when you do it like all the way to the 100, it's always gonna be on one side feel me but when you do it like this in the in the zero shape then it's really gonna be center side center and that's that's not what i want feel me then i also added this stock reverb from ableton which is at a 35 dry wet knob and really didn't do anything uh, to that okay i think i i went over to the 808s like immediately i will fix up my laziness and i'm gonna really uh try to find back which bag this was from this is the pack, not official. When in there, I uh, took the first 808. I played it in on my MIDI. Didn't put too much of thought in it. Just went ahead, played on the keys, and uh, you know, figured it out that way. The root note is C, C sharp. The root note is C sharp, which is very important that you always land on the right note. Went up to an E, and then over here, it's just an octave up. So it's the same note, and then uh, two notes down. <laughs> Boosted it up till 2.4 dB, which is very specific. I always want my drums to knock. I want those drums. I crank them all the way up. That's how I learned to play drums. When I play drums, bro, I was not a soft kind of guy. I really beat the shit out of my drums. For the kick pattern, really um, just the same thing. But in the last part of the 808 pattern, which are these nuts. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> Oh! These notes over here, they're higher up. And when we have 808 notes that are higher up, it really doesn't sound good, feel me, with the kicks. So I just delete those kicks. To give you guys some context, I'm gonna discuss the Hyatt's too. Very bouncy pattern. Uh, put the Hyatt's one semi-tone down. I think uh, it's really important to always pitch those one-shots up, down, whatever it, it needs to be to sound 
whatever you need to do to make it sound the best it can be uh really don't be lazy levito showed me this and he's a pro and he's making money of this shit like crazy so <laughs> shout out to levito i had a looperator chain on here like i have two instances of looperator which is real crazy this arcane mystery uh preset but for this tab i went into the archer dent which is literally one preset uh below that and i put also also like adjusted the dry wet just made it you know less wet because it was really very heavy and we don't want too much of a reverb going on on our hi-hats but after all those effects this is what it sounds like Then for the next part, I really have a very interesting clap pattern going on, which is really important. I feel like uh, people are way too simple with these clap patterns. There's really a pocket when you delay that's that clap one quarter note. Normally it would be at over here and then you wouldn't have this one, but I just said fuck that. So, and I did it like this. That's really what I went for. See this offset over here is doing a lot. Don't worry about this, it's just the same pattern as over here. Just duplicate it over. Real pro tip right here. This is something you probably don't know. If you press M, you can just use your keys from your uh, laptop or desktop, whatever you have, as a MIDI controller. So no excuses. Everybody has a MIDI controller right in front of them. Let me, let me demonstrate. And then we have a, the draw snare, my favorite snare. Also played it in by field. Open head right here is the generic open head. It really everyone has this sound. Just uh, type in generic, by the way, in uh, Ableton, that's Control F. When you press Control F, you can just type and you don't have to go with your cursor over there. Uh, I really wanted to get some more perks in there, feel me? So I went in and added the snare. And uh, with the perk loop, it sounds like this. But yeah, we got this riser over here. Also from our pack, this is my main riser. It's called main because it really is my main riser. Then we have this drum fill, which I constructed with my drum, uh, real acoustic drum knowledge. So you can go and go ahead and grab this kit for free in the description, bro. It's the first link in the description. You can't miss that. I think I even at some point used it as a tag, but hey, that's cool. You can do whatever, bro. Then I went over to this MIDI tab and well, this this is really special. This is sauce. Make sure y'all is paying attention right now. I dragged in the sample in here. Just make sure you get this sort of MIDI uh, slicer tool uh, thingy in there. I just make sure I have it saved in my library over here so I can grab it real fast. If I want to do this, I just grab this. I just feel me and it's in there and it's ready to go the thing here is i really play with these fade knobs because they make the melody uh not be like so consistent as it normally would be but would really like make it feel uh more wavy kind of added this tag and this is the result With all that being said guys, I really appreciate you watching. Forget about subscribing, you can do that if you want that. But I just really want to thank y'all for watching this video all the way till the end. I love you guys. I hope I can get you in the next one. Peace out.